Hey there, everybody. This is Aaron Bishop with Derish Chai, bringing to you the Patterns of Life Bible. I'm going to go through a little tutorial today. This project develops and reveals the pattern-based nature of Scripture. But when you get into it, there's a lot going on here. And there's some ideas that uh, we kind of need to shift our way of looking at the Bible when you approach it from this viewpoint. So first of all, when you come into the site, you'll notice over here on the left that there are two translations available right now that will expand over time. Uh, but for now, we're just keeping it small. We're just now getting started on this. And so we've got a lot of work still to do. Then you'll be able to select a book. As of right now, only the first five books are available, the Torah. Uh, we will be adding five more books, May 31st, 2020. And those will be the Gospels and the Book of Acts. So there'll be a total of 10 books. So the way that this is put together, is that instead of using chapters and being guided by chapters and by verses, which is a convention that w was developed long after the life of Jesus, rather than looking at scripture in that way, the book has been broke down into what are called pericopes. And you'll see those listed over here on the left. Not a periscope, pericope. And you can watch our video on pericopes to get more information on that. So in Genesis, there are 81 pericopes. And these are, each pericope is its own little pattern uh, that uh, reveals something of significance within the text. So if you continue through and click the next button, it'll take you to Genesis pericope 2, and Genesis pericope 3, and so on and so forth. So let's take a, a quick look at a really long chiasm found in the early parts of Genesis. That is the story of the flood. Okay, so the flood is a story that most of us are familiar with, at least passingly, whether it's just seeing the movie Noah or whether it's reading through the story or being told the story as a child. We're all pretty familiar with the story of Noah. But I'm pretty sure that none of you have ever seen the story of Noah as told through a pattern. Because when you look at it through the lens of a pattern, there are certain things that are highlighted that really give the story some super depth and meaning that gets skipped over in so many of these other retellings of this narrative, because it's more than just a narrative. So the way that it starts, and if you're unfamiliar with how chiasms work, please watch our video on chiasms. It's called Pattern 2 Chiasm, or The Chiasm. And you can find that on YouTube, or you can find that on the How to Use This Site page from the Welcome page. So as the story of Genesis 7, Genesis Pericope 7, the story of Noah and the flood opens, it begins and it ends with the idea of inclination of evil. So you'll see here, if you read through this text, that and every imagination in the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually right there. And so if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see for the imagination of men's heart is evil from his youth. So Man is inclined toward evil. And at the very beginning, it is this inclination of evil that precipitates or that begins the process of the flood in the first place. So as you move down, then it tells you about this man, Noah. And Noah, as opposed to having an inclination of evil, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. What exactly that means? Don't really know. We just know that it's a contrast to the inclination of evil that we read of in the first Pericope. And as we come in from the backside, we see that it talks about Noah's family again as the only ones who were alive. But if we continue on in the story, we realize that even though Noah was just and Noah was perfect in his generations and Noah was saved from the flood, Noah still had the inclination of evil. So then as you move in, uh, God goes into this large monologue in which he tells Noah of what he's going to do and why he's going to do it. He tells Noah he's going to flood the earth, destroy every living thing on it because of the evil that they've perpetrated on the earth, and that he wants Noah to build a boat so that Noah can escape from the coming onslaught, the coming deluge. And so Noah does. And if we come in on the backside, we see just before the end here, we see in C prime, that God speaks to Noah once again and tells him to leave the ark. So in the first one, he's telling Noah to build the ark. Now God is telling Noah to leave the ark behind. The ark has served its purpose. It was created. And everything that's between those two points is what the ark was created for. 
And so in D, we get this first bit of what the ark was created for. And we read that the animals came on the ark. And in D prime, we read that the animals come off the ark. And so the ark was created for the animals as well. And once they're all on the ark, they wait seven days before the flood comes. And once they know that the land is dry, they wait seven days until they get off of the ark. So there's seven day wait to get on and there's a seven day wait to get off. After the seven days, then there's 40 days, 40 days of rain. And then here in F prime, 40 days. It came after the end of 40 days that he opened the ark which he had made. And so we see that there's a 40 days of the onslaught and then there's the waiting after the 40 days. And so between these two points in the G, H, and I is what occurred as a result of that 40 days. And so in G, we read of the mountains. The mountains were covered with water. And in G prime, the mountains were then revealed. The mountains, the tops of the mountains were seen, it says here. And then in H, we read of the waters. The waters did prevail and the mountains were covered. And here we read that the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. So it's telling of the waters. What was it that covered the mountains? And then right here in the center, we read of everything that died. And we read of Noah and his family saved. There's a contrast here between the death and the life that occurs in the story of Noah and the flood. So how was it that they found life? The command of God, the word of God, was what allowed them to find life in that situation. And why was that even needed in the first place? Well, because man's inclination was evil. And as we get to the end, we find that all of this destruction, all of this death, it did not solve the problem of man's inclination towards evil. It's pretty profound when you stop and you think about it and you look at it in that way. So over here on the left, you'll see this other index that takes this entire story as a whole and then compares it to another pericope that is found in the book of Genesis. So these pericopes over here on the side, they can be split to tell a story off of each other. So this top one is the entire book of Genesis as a whole. This second one is the entire book of Genesis as split in two and split into three and four and so on. Uh, watch our video on the larger pattern to get an idea for that. So right here, if we look at the comparison of Pericope 7 and Pericope 75 on the scale of one, so there's the entire book of Genesis as an entire whole, we read of two natural disasters that took out the entire world. All of the world was covered in a flood and the entire world suffered a famine. At these points, we find this correlation of too much water and too little water that comment on each other. Because what do we read in the famine from Egypt? We read that there were people in Egypt who were brought under Egypt who were saved. And how were they saved? By selling themselves to Pharaoh so that they could live and not die. It's an interesting commentary that... Noah, why did Noah live? Well, because he had, in a way, sold out to God so that he would be unlike the rest of the world and be righteous in his generations. Yet these people here, they sold everything they had, and so they sold themselves to their master, Pharaoh. It's an interesting commentary between these two. So let's take this book and uh, let's look at the three split. In the three split, we read of the sign of the covenant, the covenant of circumcision, another just amazing chiasm that's just so fantastic and deep and profound but these two they comment on each other because in both of them we find a covenant so here at the end god covenants with man that he will no longer destroy everything that's on the earth with water and here he's making a covenant with abraham the covenant of circumcision or not really making the covenant he's revealing the sign of the covenant but it's still talking about this covenant that's being made with the god of the universe so it's pretty amazing, and it does that all through this. In the fourth split, we read of another famine, Abraham and Sarai in Egypt. And that's only a few chapters away, and yet the way that it connects is too much water, too little water. So that's just a quick overview of the Patterns of Life Bible. I hope that this has helped you to understand how to use this site and maybe helps you to appreciate a little more the profound nature 
of this site and what it can reveal. So I hope this has helped and I look forward to uh, hearing your thoughts on the Patterns of Life Bible. If you have any questions or comments, just go to this Contact Us form on the front page and uh, we will get back to you. We'd love to hear what you have to say. You can also like us on Facebook. Uh, we do have a Facebook page in which I pull out various chiasms from time to time and post them and provide a little commentary on them. Uh, just a way to look at some of the, the highlights that I have found as I have gone through building this project. Shalom.